So we've been talking about thought patterns that we can engage in to feel better. So one of the things we can do to feel happier is to focus on becoming a little bit more mindful, or at least stopping the opposite of mindfulness, which is what's often referred to as mind wandering. What is mind wandering? Well, it's when you're trying to focus on something and your, your thoughts move away from whatever it is you're supposed to be focusing on, whatever that ongoing task is, and you're focused on something else. So rather than focusing on a task or something in the external environment, you have these self-generated thoughts and feelings that are going all off in a bunch of different directions. So perhaps rather than listening to this lecture, you're thinking about what you're going to have for dinner tonight or that weird conversation you had with your friend or what you're going to look at on TikTok later when you get off. You know, like you're just everywhere but there, right? Researchers try to estimate how often we do this. Um, so they give uh, students like a little cell phone app that pings people at different times and asks three questions. What are you doing now? Are you paying attention to what you're doing? And how are you feeling? So that'll just beep at random times and you have to answer these questions. And what they find when they do this is that students self-report mind wandering just under 50% of the time, which is pretty sad. It means half of our life-ish, we're like missing what's going on. But this also has a, a bad connotation for our happiness because remember these researchers also ask, and how are you feeling? And they find whenever you self-report mind wandering, even if you're mind wandering to a good thing, like you're thinking about some upcoming vacation or something fun that's gonna happen, e anytime you're mind wandering, even if it's to a good thing, you're not feeling as good as if you're simply not mind wandering at all. Like let that sink in. If you're like daydreaming about your vacation, that it ends up feeling less good in the moment than just like focusing on doing your homework and being in flow, right? So this raises a question of like, okay, how do we stop mind wandering? And the answer is that we need to become a little bit more mindful. And I'm gonna use the definition of mindfulness um, that's used by the meditation teacher, John Kabat-Zinn. He notes that mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way. So it's the act of kind of the opposite of mind wandering. You're paying attention to whatever task, but you're doing it with a certain attitude. You're doing it with the intention of doing it on purpose. Like you're really focused on it and doing it on purpose. You're doing it right now, being in the present moment. And you're doing it with this attitude of being non-judgmental. So whatever's going on in the present moment, you're not going to judge it. You're just going to take it the way it is, right? This is mindfulness, which is awesome because it helps us break mind wandering. But there's a problem with mindfulness, which is that it's actually really, really hard to be mindful. It's very easy to mind wander hard to be mindful. So how do we deal with the hardness, right? Like how do we figure out ways that we can become a little bit more mindful? And the good news is that this is a thing you can do much better if you practice. And the main way you practice being mindful is to engage in the practice of meditation. Um, meditation is just a practice in which you're gonna commit on purpose to pay attention to something that can be your breath in certain forms of meditation. It can be a feeling of compassion. It can be whatever you want, but you're paying attention on purpose with this attitude of non-judgment. So when your mind wanders away, you commit, nope, I'm gonna just yank it back. And the evidence suggests that, for, I mean, first of all, if you've ever tried meditation, you know that meditation is pretty hard. Like if you try it, your mind is gonna wander away. But the key is that on purpose, you say, nope, I'm gonna yank my mind back and focus on my breath again. Every time you do this action of yanking your mind back, that's like doing a bicep curl for your focus. It's like doing a bicep curl for your mindfulness. So if you've meditated and you get mad at yourself of like, oh, my mind wandered, that's good. It gives you an opportunity to yank your mind back onto the task and that's what matters. And there's lots of evidence that this practice of meditation can make you happier, it can reduce mind wandering really specifically, and that's one of the factors that make you happier because when you're on task, you're feeling better. But it can do that not just in the moment when you're meditating, it can do that after the fact. So it's not like you're more on task in that five minutes a day when you're meditating, but it also means you're more on task when you're trying to do your homework or when you're talking to your siblings later at dinner and so on. There's also evidence that meditation has lots of other benefits for the stuff that you all care about too. For example, there's evidence that it literally helps brain growth, just the simple act of meditation. We know this from lots of studies, but one by Holzel et al. I'll talk to you about here. They studied gray matter size before and after an eight-week meditation course. It's kind of typical, what's called a mindfulness-based stress reduction course. It's one of the most common mindfulness courses out there. And on average for these eight weeks, people were doing about a half hour of meditation, but what they found was significant increases in people's gray matter. Like literally you're like getting more cells in your brain in a bunch of different regions after this mindfulness. These are also regions of your brain that tend to focus on task related kinds of things. So you're like literally growing your brain. And maybe as you might guess from literally growing your brain, you're also growing things like your academic performance, in particular your performance on standardized tests. In fact, one study looked at this directly. If we teach people meditation, we kind of force people to do a class where they're meditating more, does that improve your standardized test scores? Um, and in this case, students were doing 
four 45 minute classes across two weeks, plus mindfulness exercises on top of that on their own. What happened, what you find is that the meditators in these conditions showed a significant boost in their standardized test scores. So worried about your SATs? Maybe consider adding in some meditation, which will have all these other benefits for your happiness too. What can we do to be more mindful? We have our psych pro tips again, yay. Um, but the answer here is, Try out meditation. And this is a spot where I think it's really about a self-experiment, right? Some people resonate with this more than others, but just like pick five minutes, 10 minutes every day where you're just gonna sit down and commit to meditating. There's also a bunch of free apps that you can use to do this kind of thing, but really you don't need any fancy technology. You just sit and commit to following your breath and it will feel hard. You will feel like you're messed up at first, but that's kind of the point of it. Like when you mess up and have to drag your attention back, that's like you're doing it right. So that's kind of thing number one, is just like try out meditation and see how it feels if you have it already. But another psych pro tip brings us back to something we talked about in the context of hedonic adaptation, is that you can practice meditation to become more mindful, but you can just turn on mindfulness whenever you want. We talked about this in the context of what we called savoring, this act of noticing a good experience. What does this taste like? What does this feel like? You can turn that on too, and it's another act of being mindful just in the moment, even without practice. So lots of strategies we can do to bring our thoughts into the moment, and the evidence suggests that the more we do that, the more we'll experience positive emotion and feel present. Mm -hmm.